Hi everyone, it's Chris Warren Dickens, psychotherapist in downtown Ridgewood, New Jersey. Um, at the moment, serving you psychotherapy via video um, conferencing um, due to the pandemic. And I'm joined here with Jamie Willis. Perhaps you want to give me a little introduction who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. It is, it's great to see you again. Um, my, so, yeah, my name is Jamie Willis. Uh, I'm currently based in London and uh, I've been dividing my time between London and Asia. And uh, I'm a therapist and my background is, well, many areas really, but uh, mainly uh, around addiction. And that's what I've been specializing in for the last few years. So I've worked in uh, services in London and developed services within London, but also worked in Asia and now going backwards and forwards between the two. I'm currently working in, uh, in private practice at the moment, which is, which is wonderful. It's great. Okay. Yeah. And um, perhaps you want to tell me a bit about why you, someone might come to see you, you know, why they might see you for the services you offer. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, mean, I think in terms of, uh, if we talk specifically around the addiction, Chris, which is essentially what, what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there, there are many, many reasons why somebody might come to an addiction counsellor. Um, and, and there's something I just want to bring in here, Chris, which I think is a really important point, because I think people tend to only come to an addiction counsellor when things have got really out of control, really catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to speak to that just for a second, because that's not the only thing an addiction counsellor can help with. Of course, that's what we work with. But um, so many people that I've spoken to um, have been very, we've explored their journey. And we've looked at um, kind of the earlier stages of the addiction, as it were. And when we explore, well, you know, do you th think if you'd have got some help sooner, things may not have got quite at, so out of control? Sure. Yeah. And the answer is almost unanimously yes. You know, that would have been preferable. So what an addiction counsellor can do is really just assess your situation. So look at your, um, your environmental situation, look at uh, the addiction, whatever your particular thing is, look at how far uh, advanced it is or isn't, as the case may be. Um, formulate with you a care plan going forward, help you to look at recovery options, look at some of the underlying uh, things that may be informing the addiction in the first place, but also crucially plug plugging into some of the other services and some of the other support that you might need. So that might be things like the fellowship groups um, and peer support groups, but also other professionals and other professional um, services as well. And so um, when you come to an addiction counsellor, what you can expect is, is a non-judgmental assessment to really look at your situation and plan a way forward. And that might well be looking at some harm reduction techniques, you know, looking at how you might be able to keep things under control a little bit more. And it also might be looking at abstinence as well. And, you know, it's, it's not unusual for people to come along and just say, Jamie, I'm not too sure if I, if I am a, an addict. And, and we can look at that. You know, we can look at what addiction means and what an addict is. You know, and I think sometimes, as I said, people will come to a counsellor when things have got really out of control and catastrophic mm -hmm. um, under those circumstances. What an addiction counsellor can really help, um, sometimes uh, can help you to get things back under control, but can also um, talk with you in terms of options, maybe looking at residential options like rehab and things like that. And it's really good to get a relationship with the counsellor before you go into a facility like that. So when you come out, you've already got something in place and a relationship built up with somebody who can really help you and support you going forward. Mm. But that in a, in a nutshell is what an addiction counsellor can, can okay. help. Obviously, obviously it's a big, big subject. I could, I could and do, do talk for hours about this subject, but sure. in a nutshell, that's what it is. Yeah. And, and, and you kind of raise a really important point that we shouldn't just focus on. Yeah. I'm only here for addiction. There's often a bigger piece to that. Absolutely mm. right. Uh, me as a trauma therapist, uh, someone who, who helps people work through trauma, um, that, that gets my attention up because I'm thinking about the history of, of someone's life. And yeah. um, I think it's important for everyone to understand that trauma doesn't just mean some catastrophic event, some yeah. one-off road accident or seeing someone die. It's often smaller events happening over and over, like adverse childhood experiences. Sure. Um, could you talk to us about maybe the link between trauma and addiction and, and kind of your thoughts on it? Absolutely, Chris. I'm very, very happy to speak about that, you know, because I think, um, you know, there have been lots of theories and lots of um, models in terms of treating addiction, but in particularly in recent years, uh, what people have recognised is the link between trauma 
and, and addiction. And I'm really glad, actually, that you brought up the fact that it's not always a catastrophic uh, event. You know, because often when, if I'm speaking with a client and we're exploring the, the possibility, if you like, of trauma, and the conversation will often go something along the lines of, you know, well, uh, I didn't witness, you know, any of the things that you, you just outlined there. You know, I don't, can't really think about it. But actually when we start drilling down a little bit and, and sort of digging deep, you know, you reckon, we, sometimes we recognise that there are um, adverse childhood experiences. You know, there are lots of things going on as, just, as opposed to just one thing sometimes. Um, and actually what we've seen uh, down through the years is it's not that every person who experiences trauma uh, becomes an addict or goes through addiction, but there is a very, very strong correlation between people who have, who have experienced some kind of trauma and then go on to develop addictive type behaviours. And it's, it's, when you actually sort of um, boil it down, it's, it's, it's quite obvious in some ways, you know, addiction is, 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 is a manifestation of pain, yeah. you know, and we tend, we tend to look at addiction on its own, or historically we have done, and look at, looked at it as a disease, or there's something morally wrong with that person, you know, these are, these are some of the narratives that have gone on down through yeah. the years. But actually what we recognise now is addiction is, is in, in nearly all cases, if not all cases, it's a manifestation of pain. And mm. it's that be- person's best attempt at trying to medicate that pain in some way, get some relief, feel some pleasure, form some attachments. And mm. so when we look at it through that lens and within that context, we can really start to understand addiction um, in a much more holistic and compassionate way. Does, does that make sense, Chris? Yeah, no, it really Yeah, does. okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah expressed it about manifestation of pain sure, sure. And, and i think also that kind of translates into negative beliefs people carrying around, carrying around themselves and, and Absolutely. unearth that sometimes yeah. and that can develop even from very hard to identify experiences like neglect i mean avert assaults or overt abuse of a child is, is, mm. is very clear to identify in a person's history. But yeah. neglect is harder and it can mm. take a lot of sessions, can't it, to come on earth? It, re- it really, really can. There was a, a wonderful quote actually just around that and uh, I'm completely stealing this from somebody. It was yeah. uh, Dr. Gabor Mate, who's, who's a you know, big sort of mover and shaker in the addiction and trauma world and he was quoting Rumi, who's a th- um, 13th century Persian poet. There's a wonderful quote which I think speaks that really well, which is, um, let me get this right, is there, is there is a voice that doesn't have words. Mm-hmm. And I think when we're talking about the, you know, the kind of trauma that you were referring to there, that's essentially what, what we're talking about. Yeah. But of course, it doesn't have words, but it manifests. You know, unless, and in the addiction world, this is what we see. You know, this is kind of what I was talking about. But you're absolutely right, you know, in terms of working with trauma, which I know is your speciality. You know, it's really kind of getting down to that and really trying to identify some of that stuff. And I think this is where the um, the overlap, if you like, between you know addiction therapy and and uh, trauma therapy really, really lies. You know, mm-hmm. if you're um, specifically an addiction therapist, you may not necessarily be a trauma specialist. Mm-hmm. You know, and trauma work is specialist work. Mm-hmm. You know. And, you know, I think, I mean, some people are specifically addiction therapists and a lot of us will work in, in, in a more general way, but have addiction specialities. Mm. But even that said, you know, trauma is very, very specialist work. And I think, you know, looking at the kind of work that you've been doing and people like yourself, it's so important that we can refer to people like yourselves to be able to do that additional work. And we talk in terms of recovery pathways, you know, and, and I think the an addiction counsellor can help uh, a long way along that recovery pathway and identify the recovery pathway. And then there comes a point where there's almost that next bit that really needs to be done. And that's when you really start getting to the root of it, you know? So mm. I'm sure you see that in your own practice quite a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I guess if people are watching, they may be thinking, Oh, um, I need some kind of helpful tips, but sometimes that's hard with trauma work and addiction because there's not a quick fix. <laughs> But is yeah. there anything that someone could take away from today and just, just something to help them in their everyday life, even if it's not going to solve everything? 
I, I think I think there is look there's lots of stuff we could both say, Chris, and um, you know I do have a tendency to to talk too much sometimes. I'm saying <laughs> something I feel very passionate about, as you know. Um, but in a nutshell, if I was going to really condense it into a takeaway from today, it's to remember, particularly around the addiction side of things, that shame and guilt are not your friends. Right. Okay, um, and what I mean by that is quite often if we're experiencing a level of addiction wherever it sits on that continuum, there's often feelings of I can't speak to anyone or I shouldn't speak to anyone about this or I'm weak because of what's happening. No, actually, one of the takeaways from that I hope people uh, will take from today is to treat that with a little more kindness, to reach out. You know, things like addiction really thrive in silence and in the shadows. You know, so reach out, be kind to yourself, reach out, get help, speak, speak to a professional. Or there's lots of services and groups that you can access. You know, this will not get better by itself. Be firm with the addiction. Yeah. But at the same time, be kind and be compassionate. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And I find a lot of people find it hard to be kind. I think that as, Very much. as a society, we're kind of conditioned to look outwards and be kind to other people. But when, That's right. when we turn it inwards, it somehow seems selfish or self-centered. I and think so. sometimes it's useful to flip that and go, well, well, with the an oxygen analogy, we need to kind of look after ourselves first to help other people. Very so much. Help with a buy-in of it's going to help us to help other people. Then mm. being kind is strategic. Um, sure. But, I mean, also it's a good way to model behavior for others. I mean, if we're kind to ourselves, mm. then other people around us can see how to be kind to themselves. I, th- I think so. I think I think kindness tends to be, it tends to be interpreted as one of the kind of uh, soft skills. It's a little bit yeah. fluffy, you know. Those, yeah. but but actually, if you think about it in terms of recovery from addiction and recovery from trauma, it's very much at the core. You know, it really, really is. You know, because automatically, what you're doing is changing uh, the narrative, and you're changing your relationship both with the addiction and with the trauma as well. Right. You know, you're changing the way that you speak to it and deal with it and have a relationship with it. And that is so important. People, you know, I, I feel very, very strongly, Chris, you know, people suffer needlessly for the longest yeah. time sometimes. And, it's, and it doesn't need to be that way. Yeah. You know? yeah. So how can people get in contact with you if they need to? So I have a website, which is um, www jamiewillis.counseling.com I don't know why I still struggle to remember that after all this time <laughs> <It's your name. laughs> it's my own counseling so my own um, website so yeah www.jamiewillis.counseling.com you'll find all of my contact details on there so there's a whatsapp function on there you can email me you can contact me through the website you can even use a good old fashioned phone that's absolutely fine I'm happy to speak to you in whatever ways are uh, comfortable for you and is it Willis with two L's or one L? I think everyone needs to know two that. L's. Okay. Two L's. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some other stranger who doesn't deal with addiction at all. Indeed. Indeed. And Thank you. Probably you all know already, I've got a website, www.exploretransform.com, and there's online booking facilities there. Um, get in contact today with either one of us. And um, thank you very much, Jamie. This has been fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's great to see you again, Chris. Thank Thank you. you. All right.